We keep seeing the impact one player can have on a fantasy matchup. Basically, if you had Jerry Judy last week, you won, or if you went against him, you probably didn't. So we're gonna keep searching for that massive upside in week 14, who's it gonna be? You definitely wanna make sure you get the right players in your lineup this week, but also make sure you get the right picks in when you set your underdog NFL pickums. Look, this week, you still get a chance for a free new customer special if you're signing up for the first time on underdog. On Thursday, once again, Jordan Love just needs one yard. That's right, take the higher on 0.5 total yards for Jordan Love when you make your NFL pickums. You get this freebie if you're signing up for the first time and you use code ENDGAME on Underdog. You also still get up to $1,000 worth of bonus cash on your initial deposit. Just make sure you use code ENDGAME when you sign up. Why not start at the receiver position? All right, Chris, who's up? Cooper Cup is my first pick. Now, I don't know if Cooper Cup can have a Jerry Judy type of game this week, but I think Cooper Cup is going to have a really big game in a matchup that may not scream big game on paper going up against the Buffalo Bills. But you look at the Buffalo Bills this year, they are the second best defense against outside wide receivers. They're also, I think, the overall best defense against wide receivers, but specifically against outside wide receivers. When you look at them against slot wide receivers, they're 16th worst against slot wide receivers. And we've seen some pure slot receivers have some nice games against them. Way back in week three, you remember this wide receiver named Christian Kirk? He had eight catches for 79 yards against this defense. Jackson Smith and Jigba in week eight, back before he was good, when he still wasn't very good. Six catches for 69 yards. A few weeks ago, Josh Downs, seven catches for 72 yards. Cooper Cup is significantly better than all of those wide receivers right now. Not to mention, he's in a much better passing game with this Rams passing attack. The Rams are at home, and this is basically a must-win game for the Rams this week. I think the Rams are going to put forth one of their best efforts. I think this game is going to be a lot closer than people think it's going to be. And despite the fact that both Puka and Cup have been pretty much great since they've both been back, we finally saw last week Cup have his first down game. I think he bounces back big time this week in this matchup. I think he has the better matchup between himself and Puka. I think he gets more involved than Puka. And I think he scores a touchdown and has a big game. Well, I'm also going to go with a wide receiver. And let's just play up the revenge game narrative too, right? Maybe this week's Jerry Judy will be Calvin Ridley going against the Jaguars. I mean, not that there's that much revenge to be had. In fact, he's probably glad he's not still in Jacksonville. But the point remains, he's playing his former team and... This is still one of the worst defenses, specifically in the secondary. And you talked about that split between, you know, slot receiver versus an out wide receiver. Well, Calvin Ridley plays out wide at one of the highest rates among all wide receivers. And the Jaguars give up the third most points to wide receivers that are out wide. And Calvin Ridley does feast against this type of defense also. The Jaguars run man coverage, one of the highest rates in the league still. In fact, I believe they're second highest in terms of that right now behind only the Lions. Calvin Ridley is eighth in terms of yards per route run against man coverage. And based on the fact he's coming off, you know, not one of his best games, his line right now an underdog in terms of yardage is only 63.5. I'm definitely smashing the higher on that pick. And you know, if you haven't tried underdog yet, don't forget if you sign up for the first time as a new customer, you get a free pick. Just make sure when you first sign up for underdog, use code ENDGAME to get all those freebies. All right, now the wide receiver position has been kind of disappointing this season, but this week things might turn around. Who's another wide out that you like? I almost feel like we need to put Lad McConkey on this video every single week going forward. Now, I know there's some questions. He's dealing with that shoulder injury that he's played through the last couple of weeks, now dealing with a knee injury, but he was practicing Wednesday, so I'm going to assume Lad McConkey is playing this week. And if Lad McConkey is playing, I'm going to put Lad McConkey in my lineup. But this is a great matchup for Lad McConkey this week. I talked about the Bills against the slot. The Chiefs are even worse against slot receivers. In fact, they are the worst defense against slot wide receivers this year. Earlier this year, when these two teams met, back when Lab McConkey was still kind of getting his feet wet, wasn't really, you know, involved in this offense. Five catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. Now he is pretty much the entire offense. 27 targets over the last three games, a 28% target share, a 39 first read percentage. They can't run the football. There's no other wide receivers stepping up here. This is literally the Justin Herbert, Lad McConkey show. It is all they have, and against his Chiefs team, they are going to need both of these guys this week. 
I think Lab McConkey limps all over the field, you know, grabs his head 10 times, grabs his knee 10 times, grabs his shoulder 10 times, but also probably grabs 10 catches in this game. So get Lab McConkey in your fantasy lineups this week if you have them. Well, you're sticking in the slot. I'm going to go back out wide again with another number one receiver, and that is George Pickens, who's probably been in your lineups most weeks anyways, but also a guy coming off for him lately, kind of a down week. Only three catches on six targets. It's a little bit surprising there, despite the high score of last week's game for Pittsburgh, despite Russ going bananas. But look, I think he'll be fine. First of all, even on those three catches, he did score a touchdown and managed 74 yards. And that, again, by his standards these days, is disappointing because ever since Russ took back that starting job, I mean, George Pickens has been a set and forget. Averaging five catches and 81 yards per game, and that's even with that snow game in the mix. This is definitely a get right spot for him because this Cleveland defense isn't slowing anybody down. And you know the way they're living with Jameis at quarterback. I mean, it's gonna be a shootout. Yeah, even with Pittsburgh, and look, the last couple of weeks, Pittsburgh has gotten into some shootouts. Their defense is still pretty good, but Jameis Winston truly doesn't care. All right, so George Piggins will have a ton of targets here. He's gonna make those big plays. And, you know, I just mentioned earlier with Calvin Ridley, that stat, which is really key as far as yards per route run. Well, on that list with all those all pro receivers I mentioned, George Pickens is sixth. That's right, as far as yards per route run against man coverage. And Cleveland is also up there, not the very top of the heap, but they are eighth in terms of man coverage used. So this is, again, a perfect spot for Pickens to go off. We got plenty more boom picks for you, but first, if you like this video and you feel like we're helping you, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. All right, now let's get a little bit deeper. These are mostly flex options. Guys, you're not really sure if you're gonna put in your lineup or not, but you probably should this week. You should, and if you won the Isaac Garendo waiver wire sweepstakes this week in your fantasy league, you should definitely put them in your fantasy lineup. This is a great spot for Isaac Garendo. Now, we don't have a lot of data on Garendo this year because he hasn't played much, but I think the best, most telling game is if you go back to week eight, when Jordan Mason left that game early, remember he was dealing with a shoulder injury, tried to play through it, left that game early. Isaac Garendo ended that game with 14 carries, 85 yards, and a touchdown. But more importantly to me, four targets and three catches in that game. And that was something that was lacking with Jordan Mason. He wasn't really being used as a pass catcher. Isaac Garendo can both be a runner and a pass catcher, and this guy is exactly what you want. This is a home run waiting to happen every time he touches the ball. 4 3 3 40. This is one of those guys he can be getting like three yards, three yards, four yards, two yards, 50 yards, and a touchdown. Like just like that, he's made your fantasy day. Not to mention, I do think he will catch passes here. And plus, this is actually a very good matchup. I know the Bears have a good defense, but they're kind of turning into a run funnel defense. They're currently fourth best against the pass, but 22nd worst against the run. They're allowing 116 rushing yards per game and just about five yards per carry per game. This is one of those games where Isaac Garendo can rip off one, two long runs, score a touchdown, catch three to five passes, and absolutely be a stud in fantasy. So again, if you won the Garendo waiver wire sweepstakes this week, get them in your lineup. All right, now I know not too long ago, I was saying the Raiders seem to be the worst offense in the NFL, and they did look like that. But a great thing happened here, at least for fantasy purposes. All those players that have been starting for them are now gone. But aren't we a little glad to see Gardner Minshew out and Aiden O'Connell in? Alexander Madison, Jameer White, get him out of there and put guys like Sincere McCormick in, give them a shot. And the one guy who is still there and we're glad he is is Jacoby Myers. And I am now fully all in on Jacoby Myers because despite the fact they've had two of the toughest pass defenses over the last couple of weeks in Kansas City and Denver, Jacoby Myers has smashed in those games. And he's getting a ton of targets, ton of catches and the yardage even scoring a touchdown. I mean, the Raiders offense looks completely different now. So you've got to have a lot of confidence in Myers, but also now the schedule is not only good, it's great, it's amazing. Jacoby Myers, from now until the rest of the season for fantasy purposes, has the number one easiest schedule. And it starts this week with the Tampa Bay Bucks. I mean, I was hesitant with Myers for a couple of reasons over the last couple of weeks. The matchup, didn't know how O'Connell would look. And last week, we saw the result here. Should have started him. Should never have doubted AOC. Don't doubt Jacoby Myers here. The target share is enormous. It's just him and Bowers. 
that's it. All right. So with Aiden O'Connell slinging it and this matchup here in Tampa Bay, I have to start Jacoby Myers. Honestly, as far as the wide receiver starts sit, it's hard to just blanket say you have to start Jacoby Myers no matter what. I'm starting him no matter what. I don't care. I have to start him this week. He's going to go off. And look, since Devontae Adams left town or stopped playing and then left town because he was traded, Jacoby Myers has averaged almost 10 targets per game, six and a half receptions per game. That consistency is there. And now there's actually some upside too. All right, let's get back to the running back position, though. Yeah, you said you doubted Jacoby Myers. I, I kind of doubted Rico Dowdle last week after really talking him up all offseason. He had done nothing all season, but he came through last week. But not only did he come through, he took over this backfield finally. The Cowboys finally gave in, only gave Dusty Zeke one carry. We didn't even see Dalvin Cook on the field, thank goodness. It was all Rico Dowdle here. Now he gets a fantastic matchup this week against the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I know the Bengals aren't necessarily like terrible against the run but they're just a terrible defense that can be exploited any which way we just saw last week Najee Harris ran for 4.7 yards per carry which for Najee Harris might as well be six yards per carry now I will say I was a little hesitant putting Rico Dowdle in here because I am worried that maybe the game script can get out of hand like the Bengals are just rolling the Cowboys and the Cowboys are forced to throw but I still think it's okay for Rico Dowdle because last week he got all the running back targets as well. He'll still catch passes. So I think even if it is a blowout, he'll be involved enough. But if somehow the Cowboys can keep it close, which again, against this Bengals defense wouldn't be too shocking because every team keeps it close with the Bengals, no matter how many points they score. Rico Dowdle could absolutely have a huge game this week with six teams on by, so many big time running backs out. If you're desperate at running back, fire up Rico Dowdle once again this week. I'm going to go with the running back that, again, I was kind of out on the last couple of weeks, but I'm going to trust Tyrone Tracy this week. And really, despite the situation, more I'm betting on the talent here. Now, a couple of things. Tracy hasn't been that great like he had been before because, well, basically, he's gotten the slap on the wrist for fumbling, right? The fumbling issues happened two weeks in a row. And so then we saw it didn't start the game. Devin Singletary now all of a sudden is back getting more touches. But I think that's done with because despite the fact that he technically didn't start last week, he was involved actually more than ever. And we didn't notice it. 71% snap rate and even more encouraging 64% route rate. He's still catching some passes. In fact, even despite limited time on the field because of that punishment, He's got six catches over the last two games, managed to even score a touchdown last game, which kept at least his fantasy value somewhat afloat. And now I think he will be even more involved because the Giants, I mean, let's face it, what do they have to gain from playing Devin Singletary, right? Tracy did his time. He learned his lesson. Let's get him out there, see what he can do, get him going. And the game script should be better here. It's the New Orleans Saints. I am not worried about the New Orleans Saints putting up a lot of points here. And look, don't let this defense fool you. I get that they have been less horrible since Darren Rizzi took over as the interim head coach, but not against the run. In fact, the last three games with Rizzi head coach, they've allowed 5.3 yards per carry. That's the third worst among all run defenses. I think Tracy is gonna have the chance for some of those explosive runs. He'll be involved, he will catch passes, and he does have some touchdown upsides. So look, there are a lot of teams out this week. You need a shot in the arm, you need to make the playoffs, you need upside, which is why you're picking one of these booms Put it in your lineup. Take a chance on a guy who has shown that explosiveness like Tyron Tracy. And you definitely might need a quarterback or tight end to stream. We'll give you one of each. Let's start at quarterback. Yeah, you talk about Jacoby Myers. Let's stack him with Aiden O'Connell. I think if you're looking for a streaming QB this week and the obvious guys are gone, I'm not going to talk about the obvious guys. I think Aiden O'Connell is probably your best bet. It's a great matchup this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Over the last three games, the Raiders are throwing at the 12th highest rate over expectation. The Buccaneers are allowing the seventh highest pass rate over expectation. The Buccaneers run defense has gotten better lately. Vita Vea has gotten healthy. You look at the last three games for the Buccaneers against the 49ers, the Giants, and the Panthers, they've given up 44, 44, and 61 rushing yards. This is not a run defense you want to go against anymore. And the Raiders don't have a running game. They're going to need to throw the ball over and over just like they did last week against the Kansas City Chiefs when they couldn't run the ball. This is a game where Tampa Bay should have no problem putting points on the board, which means the Raiders are going to be in come from behind mode most of the game. Yes, there's always a chance Aiden O'Connell can throw a pick or two, 
take some terrible sacks, but he can also put up tons of yards and tons of touchdowns. So if you're looking for a streaming option this week, Aiden O'Connell has the upside you want. I'm actually going to go back to that Saints-Giants matchup, believe it or not. You know, the go-to streaming tight end last week was Taysom Hill because he's the everything for that offense. No longer, of course, Taysom Hill is done. And that's a big deal for the Saints offense, as we know, because he did multiple things. But also, over those last three weeks, since they got a new head coach here, Taysom Hill was the leading target on the team. The second was Alvin Kamara, the running back. And then third is Juwan Johnson, the tight end. So if you need a tight end, why not go with a guy who's going to basically be the number one target on this team other than the running back getting the dump offs? I mean, Juwan Johnson is going to need to step up, let's face it, because they have no wide receivers outside of Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who gets about three targets a game and all of them go for 50 plus yards. Johnson's going to get a lot of work in the intermediate passing game. They have to throw to somebody. I mean, sometimes they do. And they did it last week. In fact, Juwan Johnson was pretty nice. Seven targets last week. The yardage wasn't big. But again, this was because Taysom Hill was still the main factor. Juwan Johnson is going to inherit a larger target share. And this matchup on paper doesn't look great against the Giants. But honestly, if you look at it, you know, they haven't given up much of anything to tight ends. They haven't faced any really good tight ends this whole year. They have not gone against a Trey McBride, a Brock Bowers, a Travis Kelsey, none of that. So it's a little bit skewed here. And look, this Giants defense is not scaring anybody. I think Juwan Johnson might be the top streaming tight end out there if you need one, especially this week. You know, if you need help setting your lineups, we got you covered at every position, start, sit advice, and a whole lot more. Don't forget to check this week's playlist.